Hello, everyone. It's been a rather intense week, and so I have not been able to upload as many videos as I usually do, as I did last week, uh, because there's just all the work is just piling up uh, ever more. And so uh, this video is going to be uh, the continuation of the logic series. And so we're, we're going to be discussing the properties, continue with the properties of functions. But I have a couple of things uh, in the beginning of this video to say. Uh, so if you just if you just want to get to the to the functions, you can fast forward a little bit. I don't know what minute it's going to be at because I'm not uh, tech. I'm not so much tech oriented, but you, you can figure this out. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I say this because I know a lot of people tell me, why don't you just get to the point? And, you know, uh, but like I said, I speak about what I want. This is my channel. And uh, I think most people appreciate that I have a commentary on the social issues of our day. But uh, I understand that not everyone likes that. Uh, but you can always fast forward the video if you want to just get to the logic part. But I do have a couple of news items. Uh, I've been receiving so many emails this week and emails sometimes, you know, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but emails normally give me anxiety and uh, not in a bad way necessarily. It's just that I know that I have to respond to so many and they, they come just incessantly. And I usually I check my emails once a day. I have a very structured life. And so that means that I do not spend all day online. Uh, so I have a dedicated time when I sit down, usually in the evenings, I sit down and just uh, read up on my emails and catch up on that. But uh, I also receive written letters as well. But uh, in fact, uh, the other day I received an interesting email from a young man in Saudi Arabia. Very interesting because it's a, it's a fascinating place. And uh, even though he's not a Christian, he's a Muslim, but he was talking about how we broadly share the uh, many of the same values. He uh, is very interested in defending uh, civilization in his country and tradition in his country because he told me that uh, not in the same way as in the United States, but uh, Saudi Arabia right now is going through some kind of, uh, I'm not familiar with all the changes, but uh, he mentioned some of the changes that the monarchy there is uh, is undergoing. Uh, and so he said he was, uh, he was trying to fight back against that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I have a, a good news for you all about free speech today because the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled, the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco, I believe it is, uh, they ruled in favor of a math professor by the name of Lars Jensen. And he's a math professor who was unconstitutionally punished for criticizing what he believed was the, uh, he, his college had made a decision to water down it's math standards. Can you imagine that? We've talked about that on this channel, about how so many colleges and universities and high schools are watering down the standards because they don't like the statistics. Uh, they don't like the reality of failure in this country, the reality that so many of our students uh, across the board are actually utter failures in math. And I'm not blaming the students, by the way. I am blaming a failed. We have a failed education system in America. Uh, the, the public schools are a joke at this point. But I'm going to read to you, I printed out, this is from an organization called FIRE. I didn't even know about Lars Jensen because I normally, I tune out as much as I can the news because we have an utterly depraved press. It's gutter press in this country. Most of the press, you, you hear nowadays, even some of the reporters now are using cuss words when they, um, w when they make comments. But so I try to tune them out as much as I can. But they, they ruled, they reversed a federal district court. The, the name of this organization, by the way, is called FIRE, Freedom Individual Rights in Education, I believe it is. Uh, and they, they reversed a federal district court. It says the Ninth Circuit held Jensen suffered wrongful dismissal of his claims against Truckee, T-R-U-C-K-E-E, -E, Meadows, Truckee Meadows Community College in Reno, Nevada, and that he should have his day in court to prove college administrators violated his First Amendment rights. The court also held Jensen's right to speak out about the math standards was so clearly established that the administrators were not entitled to dismissal on qualified immunity grounds. I mean, this is an insult. This is insulting to freedom. Is this China? Is this the Soviet Union? These are public 
publicly funded colleges. Uh, and I'm all for freedom of, of private property. You know, if, 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 the, if a college doesn't receive government funding, then they can do what they, they should be able to do in a free country, what they want in terms of uh, we're not a free country. Though. America has long been uh, we're no longer a free country. They're, we're too intervened by the federal government. Uh, we're, we're told what to do in almost every aspect of our lives. At least our uh, a consolation could be at least we're not Europe yet. We're not the European Union. Thank God. Praise God for that. And I hope that we never tolerate becoming the European Union. They, they're not allowed to do anything in Europe. Um, in fact, many of my Sunday messages, if I lived in Europe, I would probably be uh, I would probably be detained by the police uh, by uh, because they do not respect in, see, in Europe. They do not respect the religious freedom of people. They don't have the First Amendment in Europe. You can be arrested for what you say. Look at the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is an example of that. They have no free speech rights at all. Um, there have been people protesting uh, many times of all, not, not just Christians, by the way, all kinds of people uh, get arrested uh, in Europe when it's inconvenient, when they say inconvenient things. Uh, you have the example what happened in France a few years ago. They banned the headscarf for the Muslim people. Uh, they have no concept of respect for, um, for individual freedom at all. It's, it's alien to the Europeans. But unfortunately, in America, we are becoming more and more European. There's a lot of people who are in favor of more government intervention. And, um, you know, I pray to God every day that the people who would want to change us, the people who would want to make America more, less free, I pray to God that they are utterly destroyed. And I mean it. Uh, so, but anyway, I hope that this was encouraging news. I, I wish Lars Jensen all the best. And he, I, I don't know if he watches this channel, I doubt it. But if he does, uh, Lars Jensen, uh, please do not ever be afraid. Do not be afraid. If you have the power of truth, you have, you speak truth, you have the power of God. You should never be afraid of some of these clowns uh, in higher education. They are nothing. They are worthless. And you've seen how cowardly they are uh, when when push comes to shove. A lot of them have lost. Columbia University just lost its uh, millions of dollars in federal funding. And uh, that's on them. That's on. And I, and I say that as a Columbia University alumni, alumnus, uh, they are utterly, they are on the wrong side of all the issues of our day. Columbia University should be a place of learning. Our university should be a place of learning for all students, not just for one side or the other. It should be a place of learning, not a place where you go and demonstrate and do all this nonsense. But anyway, let's get to the, um, the functions. All right. So in the previous video, we talked about uh, it was called proper definitions of math functions. And so I encourage you, I'm going to link it down below in the description. I encourage you to watch that first if you have not already watched it, because otherwise this, this is part two of that. Uh, but I want you to see the problem on the board, and I want you to think about it. It says, let A equal 1, 2, 3, and B is 2, 4, 6, 8. Those are the elements. Which of the following represent functions between A and B? And what are functions from A into B? Think about it, pause the video, and then we're going to discuss some other uh, definitions. All right, so hopefully you've, uh, these are our responses here. Hopefully you, it matches what, with what you have. The first one is not a function, part A, because two, you notice two is related to both six and eight. Part B is a function between A and B, but it's not a function from A into B. Why? Because, well, you notice two in A is not related to anything in B. And of course, Part C and D, they're both functions from A into B. That brings us to our next discussion of the uh, types. There are three more types of functions or definitions that you need to know about. And that is the first case. All right, we need to talk about surjective, surjective function. So a function is said to be surjective. And by the way, this is a word that a lot of schools don't teach. They used to teach this in high school even. But... It's, when it's surjective, we say it maps uh, to it maps A onto B if B is in the range of F. In other words, every element of B has a rightful pre-image in A. No element left behind. Not to be confused with no child left behind, by the way. No freeloaders in the codomain. We talked about the codomain last week. A surjective function is also sometimes referred to as a surjection. Now, whether the function 
is surjective or not, it really depends entirely on the choice of co-domain. Much like whether an institution upholds true rigor depends on the standards it sets. A function can always be made surjective by simply redefining the co-domain to match the range. But really, this feels like the really the mathematical equivalent of moving the goalposts. It works, but it's hardly an ideal approach. And I gave you a function here, if you consider it, if you were to describe the exact range in this function, f of n equals n, and you see that exclamation point I put in there, raised to the 1 over n, it's really like trying to pin down every unintended consequence of radical policies. It's messy, inconvenient, and ultimately futile. Instead, you can pragmatically write it as what I've done here with set notation, n to r, or implies r. And really, you that's embracing the elegance of generality without falling into the pit of unnecessary complications. I keep saying this over too. You do not want to overly complicate what does not need to be overly complicated. Now, if you saw what happened in part D of the uh, warm-up questions, no element in part D of the codomain appeared more than once as the second entry in an ordered pair. And so you find yourself in the presence of another critical type of function, which is the next uh, definition that we're going to discuss now. But here, are, I put some notes for you so that you can uh, consider this. All right, here are your other definitions. We have injective or one-to-one. -one. And that, in other words, an injective function, it treats its inputs with individual dignity, you could say. No duplicates, no confusion, just pure unambiguous mapping here. Unlike certain modern ideologies that blur distinctions, an injection upholds order and uniqueness, ensuring that every input retains its rightful identity. You then have an injective function uh, that can also be referred to, um, it really should remind you of precision and the precision that mathematics demands. And let's be clear here, when a function is, when we say it's both surjective and injective, it, ex it really exhibits an enviable level of order and structure. It is, we say that it is particularly well behaved, something we certainly wish more institutions and societal constructs would aspire to these days. But when it's both of this, it's called bijective or a bijection. And the bijection is really the gold standard of functions. It's perfectly balanced between inclusion and distinction, leaving no elements out while maintaining complete individuality. And we live in a world obsessed with lowering standards. Bijections remind us that excellence comes from structure, discipline, and above all, once again, as we always say, mathematical truth. So let's discuss this even more. Interestingly enough, you can think about the contrapositive of an injection. Remember that you can always create a logically equivalent implication. And even for definitions, uh, this can be at times you can find it very useful. So if you were to apply the contrapositive to the, uh, at least to the second half of the injection definition, you can really say that a function is... Remember, injective is one-to-one, -one, or one-to-one, -one, I should say it this way. If a sub one does not equal a sub two, for example. 
And this implies that So a function is injective if different points in the domain are sent to different points in the co-domain. In other words, remember we talked about the arrows and the, the shooting range. You're, you're basically saying no two arrowheads collide in that case. Another way you could think about, uh, speaking of bijections, you can also use something called a Venn diagram. You don't have to, but sometimes it's helpful to see things I know visually sometimes for sure. So if you think of injections here and surjections here, you have bijections in the intersection. But you can always keep it the, at the more formal approach as well. All right, I have two more examples. I have time for two more examples today that you can look at and consider. You have the function given by the formula f of x equals x squared. And if we take r, the real numbers, for both the domain and codomain, then f is not surjective because there is no real number that maps onto negative 1. But if you limit the codomain, to be the set from zero to infinity, then you have a function that is surjective. Because in that case, f of negative two is going to equal f of two. And so you see that f is not injective when defined on all of the real numbers. But if you restrict f to be defined on only zero to infinity, it does become injective. Definitions matter restrictions matter so if f goes from zero to infinity we say that it is bijective the other uh, example and some of you applied people might like it, the applied mathematicians we have uh, a subset here s is a subset of a and you can define a function as follows and this is what is known as the characteristic function or indicator function of S. And it's very used in probability and statistics. That's why I mentioned the applied people. So if S is a non-empty proper subset of A, then X sub S is surjective. But if there's uh, an empty set or S equals A, then it would not be surjective. So I hope that this series is continuing to, uh, to help your needs. And if it is, please continue to support the channel. Please continue to help us grow. I have lost count. You know, I'm just, as I always say, every week is a surprise because we're now above, we're over 34,000 subscribers. Uh, but thank you all. Uh, you should always subscribe if you feel like it. And if you don't share the values of this channel, then of course you don't subscribe. Uh, I don't pressure anyone. You know, you do your thing. But I think that people will appreciate the honesty that you see on this channel. Very few channels are honest. You get here is what you see is what you get. God bless you all. And I'll try to upload more videos uh, in the coming days, maybe even today. We'll see.